This is the Georgia Farm Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness news and features for farmers and consumers about Georgia's number one industry, agriculture. The Georgia Farm Monitor is produced by the state's largest general farm organization, the Georgia Farm Bureau. Now, here are your hosts, Ray D'Alessio and Kenny Bergamy. Welcome to the Georgia Farm Monitor, everybody. I'm Kenny Bergamy. Glad you joined us this week for a very special show. You see, 2016 marked a special anniversary for the Farm Monitor. You hear it each week the when the program Farm begins. Monitor. Since 1966, your source for state and national agribusiness. Since 1966, for 50 years, the Farm Monitor has provided news and information about agriculture, which is still Georgia's largest industry. We are proud of that heritage and we are very excited to share this special anniversary with you. Over the next half hour, we'll see just how far the Monitor has come. We'll talk to those who were there in the beginning, who built the show and helped make it such a success. And for you longtime viewers, you'll see a few familiar faces. The story of the Georgia Farm Monitor television show actually begins with the late Bill Lanier. Mr. Lanier served as the president of Georgia Farm Bureau from 1964 until 1970. He opened the door for the Farm Bureau to move into the broadcast media world. I had a feeling that uh, our membership was not fully informed. I also had a feeling that the public needed to know what that we were doing because of the population in Georgia. The consuming public outweighs the farm and farm uh, vote, so I thought that they had so I presented this to the board of directors and they voted unanimously to, to adopt it. I wanted them to know what we were doing. I wanted them to know what we were doing with the General Assembly of Georgia. I wanted them to know what we were doing with the congressional delegation from Georgia. And it was for that reason that I gave birth to the idea of uh, mass communication for Georgia Farm Bureau Federation. Mr. Lanier opened Farm Bureau to the possibility of using radio and television to inform the public about Georgia agriculture. Before long, his vision became a reality. It was a collaborative effort between Farm Bureau and Channel 13 in Macon. They needed ag news on their station. Farm Bureau needed a place to put it. So that's the way we started out. We wanted to do a television show and a guy named John Johnson started this, this whole thing. The Georgia TV Monitor, as it was called then, premiered in 1966 with John Johnson serving as host and producer. It wasn't long, though, before Jimmy Lee would take over those duties. A farm broadcaster before joining the Monitor, Jimmy was right at home working on television. I started at uh, WBBN, it was, in Perry, Georgia, my hometown. And when you're in a small station, you do everything, including farm news. So I could say, I started Farm News in 1956. When I was with MAZ Radio, they needed a bona fide farm broadcaster. And I did six or eight interviews every day. And I found out farmers appreciated people talking about them or giving them a chance to talk about what they do. It was something new for Georgia, putting farmers on television to show viewers what they do. But the idea worked and uh, the farmers uh, were the ones that helped build that show, <clears throat> no doubt about it. We would probably do two, maybe at the most three farm visits every week. That's a tough job, you know, and to go out and get all that and bring it back and put it together and then <laughs> put the show together, it takes a lot of time, takes a lot of effort, and it took a lot of work to keep up with 22, 23 commodities, stay on top of them enough to ask intelligent questions when we got the experts to answer them. In 1969, the program's name was changed to Georgia Farm Monitor. For the first few years, the Monitor was produced in cooperation with WMAZ Television in Macon, and Jimmy Lee was an actual employee of WMAZ until 1970 when he came to work at Georgia Farm Bureau. In those days, decades before the internet and social media, coming up with story ideas for a weekly show could be pretty difficult. Sometimes it took word of mouth, sometimes a phone call from a farmer, and sometimes a little bit of luck. And a lot of times I just get in the car and go out. And I, I, one day I ran up on a guy harvesting his pecans. I just stopped, rode into the farm road there, and 
when he got up there, he turned off the equipment, came, we did a great interview. You know, I got a lot like that. It just you know, where you happen up on something. But here's the thing I depended on a lot was the county agents. They were helpful to no end in finding interesting farmers to go and visit with and County Farm Bureau presidents. And a lot of times I would interview both the farmer and the county agent so the county agent can tell me how great that farmer was. <laughs> For a long time, Jimmy worked alone on the Farm Monitor, and that would change in the late 1970s when Steve Malone came to the Georgia Farm Bureau. Yeah, I never thought I'd get into agriculture. It's, it's funny, when I worked at WMAZ, Jimmy was over there. He was the farm director, as well as other things. And he decided to leave, and they made me the farm director. And then Jimmy said, well, since you did farm news over at WMAZ, you can come over here and do farm news. <laughs> we had a, a wire from a American Farm Bureau with farm stores on it. Jim would pull a lot of those off and read it, and then he'd get local people to come in and he'd interview them and maybe run some 16 millimeter film, this cover film, while we did the interview. And uh, finally, after we got some video cameras, and uh, our video camera, not some. Uh, so then we were able to go around the state and do stories with farmers in different parts of the state. Well, my buddy Steve Malone and I worked together for a long time, and we <clears throat> we made a lot of trips together. We had a lot of great, uh, great times, a lot of funny times, a lot of good times, a lot of serious times, but uh, we made it great. And it's good to have you with us on The Monitor this weekend. A couple of projects took place in the Atlanta area. These early years of The Monitor saw many changes. Still photos and 16 millimeter film gave way to videotape. The show went from airing on a single station in 1966 to a statewide network of eight television stations by the early 1980s. And in 1985, Jimmy Lee decided it was time to move on, and Steve Malone assumed the role of producer and anchor of the show. But more changes were on the horizon. We'll look at those changes when this special anniversary episode of The Monitor continues. Georgia is, is the eighth largest state in our country, population-wise. From an agriculture standpoint, it's bigger than that because of our port, because of our farmers. I mean, I look at the diversity of our crops, the innovation that I see going on in the state of Georgia in, in terms of agriculture development, and then I, I see the Farm Monitor as, a, as the conduit, if you will, to have an active discussion, active conversation about the agricultural industry in Georgia. So. I think it's provided a great service. There's no surprise to me that, that it's going to continue, uh, that it's been here 50 years, and, I, and my hope is it'll continue for another 50 years. Uh, I'm Zippy Duval, and I'm president of American Farm Bureau, and I just want to say congratulations to the Georgia Farm Monitor for 50 great years of serving agriculture in Georgia and across America. Welcome back to our special look at the Georgia Farm Monitor's first 50 years. The agriculture industry in America today is very different from what it was in 1966 when the Monitor began. Advances in technology, genetics, and land management practices have changed how farmers raise crops and animals. Even farmers themselves have changed, having to develop skills as businessmen, marketers, and communicators. These changes in agriculture mirror the changes that took place over the years on the Farm Monitor. While the show was originally produced at WMAZ Television in Macon, in the late 1970s, production was moved to a new studio in the Georgia Farm Bureau State Headquarters on Riverside Drive. Jimmy Lee had served as the director of radio and television for Georgia Farm Bureau, as well as producer and anchor of the Farm Monitor. When Jimmy moved on in 1985, Steve Malone took over as the Monitor's producer and anchor. One of the main things I wanted to do was explain the farmer's position to consumers who were watching the show and, and let them know what the situation was with the farmers, what kind of predicament they were in, or how good they were having a year or something like that. And some years it was pretty bad, especially in the 80s we had drought and a lot of farmers lost their farms during that time. With several years of drought, farmers who used their farms year after year as collateral for production loans, in many cases have used all their equity. And we went around the state with, uh, I think, Senator Talmadge and had meetings in different places. And uh, we'd try to explain to the consumers 
what kind of situation the farmers were in and why everything was, was so bad for a spell there. Continuing a trend of hiring former WMAZ radio employees, Paul Beliveau was hired in 1985 to replace Jimmy Lee as information director for Georgia Farm Bureau and as executive producer of The Monitor. Well, when I came to Farm Bureau, I wasn't even sure what I'd be doing. I mean, I knew that they had a television camera, and I knew that Steve Malone and Jimmy Lee were on TV occasionally, but I didn't know much about it. And basically, uh, several people who had been there longer uh, came over to me and said, you know, the, the whole purpose of this thing here is to try to get maximum information to farmers. And, and, you know, the president at the time, Bob Nash, said, you know, I want you to grow this thing. I want you to take it to the next level. And, and so that's what I was thinking the whole time. Let's get more television stations on the air. Let's make the equipment better. My job, as far as I was concerned, was to deal with the board and the president to make sure we had the equipment and the tools and everything we needed to, to take that television show into a TV station or a network and say, this is good stuff. You need to run this. The first priority for Paul was expanding the Monitor staff. He hired Rick Trepto to be a reporter for the Monitor and a few years later added a second reporter position. Having two reporters in addition to Steve Malone as anchor and producer greatly increased the show's coverage of news and features. While there were changes being made behind the scenes, the Monitor introduced viewers to the changes taking place in Georgia's agricultural community. I think some of the interesting things that we did was uh, the opening of the Ag Center down there when they built that and got that open. And also the, the uh, Sunbelt Farm Show got started during that time and that's turned into a big farm show. During the uh, Ag Expos, when they first came out with driving your tractor from a GPS or something, a, a satellite, keeping you in the rows, not running over your crop and telling you where to fertilize and where not to fertilize, where to water, not to water. That's, that's just a world of change. As the Monitor made its way onto more television stations and agriculture in Georgia became more diversified, there came a need for more staff. But yeah, it was a bare bone staff and we added people I think we added people in the middle of the night when they didn't know. Or we'd, we'd just hire somebody and, and say, oh, by the way, this is Michael, you know, this is Daryl. And we added some people, uh, snuck them in there. But, uh, but we wound up hiring good people that were versatile, and that, and that was really the key. Learning the status of the 1990 Farm Bill and the future of H.R. 836 is very important, but just as important, discussion of individual commodities. Gerald Calhoun says one of the most commonly asked questions on his strawberry farm is, how many pounds of the strawberries will it get to the acre? Well, conventional wisdom says for every plant, you should get about a pound of berries. Consider this, he has 30,000 plants on this acre and a half alone. Kids also got to take a look at some of these baby alligators, like this one about three months old. You might ask, what do alligators have to do with farming? The idea of a U-pick operation has really taken off in the last few years. The customer comes out to a field like this one, they get to pick their own berries, fresh off the vine, sample it, and taste the sweetness right in the field. The event brought many from the ag community and the governor together. But most of all, the governor got to show off his milking skills with this cow in the shadows of the Capitol. In 2003, Steve Malone retired after more than 25 years in Georgia Farm Bureau and on the Farm Monitor. Doug Long joined the show in 2002 as co-host and took over the producer's role on Steve's retirement. In late 2003, Doug moved on and Denny Moore joined the fold. Denny would co-host and produce the monitor for 10 years, bringing his own unique style and energy to the program. That's tough duty, Paul, but a man's got to do what a man's got to do, and I don't mind volunteering. That's admirable, Denny. Thank you very much, Paul. But Tommy says anyone can do it, even me. He should have never said that because to me, that was a challenge. One, two, three, go. Go right to your knees and stay right there. Great. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty confident. Yeah, I don't blame you. I'd be upset with me too. Tipsy fruit trifle has a cognac and Grand Marnier in it. Is this great or what? Someone needs to give that ox a tissue. Listen, anybody can do it. Paul, back to you. Who knew? Our own Denny, an equestrian daredevil. 
The Monitor has always been an important source of news and information for the ag community, but there have been times when the Monitor actually played a role in a developing story. Perhaps the best example of this came in 2007. The University of Georgia had earmarked the Midville Experiment Station to be closed. And um, I found out about it from one of the county presidents down there who called and said, look, we got a problem. Uh, they're saying that they don't have the finances to keep this place going, but the researchers all say, well, we'd like to have it so that we could compare results from the Tifton lab or uh, the one in, in Sumter County with what's being grown in that area. There's still a very large agricultural base in, in that area. It serves Washington County, uh, right, uh, Wrightsville, and many other areas. So I went over and talked to three of the Farm Bureau members. He went up there to do a story on the closing, and the farmers in that area said, man, you know, I wish they wouldn't let this happen. And Rick got incensed along with the farmers and he ran with it, but it was something that the farmers in that area felt strongly about it. Wasn't Rick doing this, it was the Farm Bureau members. And we got out and we looked at, at the facility and yeah, I mean, it needed some work, it, it needed some support. And at that time, Scott Engel just became the new uh, uh, director of agriculture, dean of agriculture at, at the University of Georgia. And he came down and talked to him. Uh, I'd also gone up and done a story uh, with, the de with the then acting dean to get the university side. And uh, so everybody presented their own side. And then we had a kind of a public hearing. Dean Engel came in and said, look, we're gonna keep this thing open. And, uh, and they did. I don't think it ever crossed the line, but Rick definitely ran with that one. And, and it got, the, the whole project got stopped and things were turned around. And, and I think it was the Georgia Farm Monitor and Georgia Farm Bureau media that caused that to turn around. They, they just didn't expect that kind of pushback. One of the most notable changes in the Monitor's history came in 2000 with the addition of the RFD TV network as an affiliate for the show. Being a part of the RFD TV lineup instantly provided the show a national audience. And that's been a great relationship because it's given a lot of exposure to Georgia agriculture nationally. It's also exposed uh, a lot of people to the farm story, to, to the farmer's plight to the fact that there is a drought or there's not a drought, there's too much water. Uh, everything that the farmers were go going through was seen on that program every week. And so RFD TV just magnified the, the scope of what Georgia Farm Bureau was doing. A huge technical upgrade came a few years later when production of the monitor switched over to high definition. Our type of show is well suited for HD because quite frankly, agriculture provides such beautiful scenery. We saw a changing of the guard of sorts beginning in December 2012. Over the course of 15 months, Denny, Rick, and Paul all announced their retirements. They, along with Jimmy Lee and Steve Malone, helped craft the farm monitor and the product you see today. Their influences remain and cannot be overstated. We are grateful for the legacy that they have left us. We have one last break coming up, but when we return, we'll take you behind the scenes here at the Georgia Farm Monitor. Don't go away. I'm United States Senator Johnny Isaacson, and I'm delighted to be here today to commend the Georgia Farm Monitor on 50 years of quality reporting on Georgia agriculture, Georgia farmers, Georgia producers, and all issues of importance to the agricultural community. So I hope everybody will join me on congratulating the Georgia Farm Monitor on 50 years of continuous service. Uh, Georgia Farm Monitor, uh, thank you for telling the story of agriculture across this country for 50 years. Uh, it truly is remarkable that you've been able to uh, be part of telling the story for 50 years. And uh, I uh, encourage you to continue on and hope to be here in the next 50 years and see where you've gone. Welcome back. We've taken a look back at the Georgia Farm Monitor's roots and gotten reacquainted with some old friends. So now let's turn the page and look at the Farm Monitor today with producer and co-host Ray D'Alessio. I want people to watch this show and come away thinking, you know what, agriculture is cool. That is really cool. And I want to do away with some of the misconceptions that people have about agriculture and farming. Um, we need to open their eyes. We need to open a lot of people's and educate people on what farmers really do. 
My goal when I go into every show is, and I, I really try to target the non-ag audience. I want people like myself who had no connection with ag or very little connection with ag to realize, man, this is important stuff. You know, we can't survive without agriculture. We can't survive without farmers. And I need to know this stuff and I need to really kind of get up to speed on what farmers do and where my food comes from. We're working every day producing the Farm Monitor. Now, I could tell you that when one episode is shot and edited, we begin working on the next episode, but that wouldn't be entirely true. We're always working two or three weeks ahead, scheduling farm visits, researching story ideas, gathering material, and conducting interviews. It's a continuous process, but also an exciting and rewarding one. Obviously, there are stories that we have to cover uh, you know, on a monthly or a yearly basis with the harvest and the planting and stuff like that. But as far as those other stories out there, it's just a matter of you know, scanning the internet, reading stories out there, uh, you know, reading these ag websites, um, and making phone calls, you know, making phone calls to local extension agents, uh, making phone calls to local Farm Bureau uh, you know, county offices. There's always good stories out there, and that's really what we try to do. We try to, uh, you know, get out there and, and tell as many stories as possible. With farmers and ranchers and people in agriculture, they're so down to earth. They're so appreciative that you're there, you know, telling their story. Um, and they're so willing to tell their story, too. And there are so many good stories out there. Um, I wish we, we, we could probably fill a show a day with as many, as many stories that are out there. Hello, I'm Andy Lucas and I'm fortunate to hold the role of executive producer of the Georgia Farm Monitor. Our program and the members of our Farm Monitor family have changed over the years, but our mission has remained the same. We want viewers to know how important agriculture is in our daily lives. Our passion has been and will continue to be capturing the many stories of farmers in agriculture in Georgia and throughout the heartland of America while highlighting the rural lifestyles. Celebrating 50 years of reporting on agriculture and telling the farmer's stories is something we consider a privilege. The Farm Monitor has been on the air for a half a century. This would not have been possible without the support of our Georgia Farm Bureau presidents and state board members throughout the years, as well as all Georgia Agricultural Commodity Commissions, the Georgia Peanut Commission, and others throughout the decades. We are also very grateful to the many broadcast partners who help us distribute the show in their market. But most importantly, we are thankful for you, our viewers. Whether you are here in Georgia or across the country, we thank you for your loyalty through the years. We're grateful for your trust and support. As we embark on what we hope is another 50 years of telling ag stories, we will continue to embrace technology while looking for new ways to promote the agricultural industry. The Georgia Farm Monitor team is looking to the future with excitement. We are excited to see how the production of food and fiber develops and changes in the coming years. We're excited to see how new technologies enhance our abilities to tell those stories. And we are excited to have you come along with us on this journey. Thank you, Andy. And thank you for joining us for this special look at 50 years on the Georgia Farm Monitor. I'm Kenny Burgamy.